So the idea behind these sets of uh, videos is to build projects. Um, and we will start with a granulator. Um, <clears throat> this one I called Plode, as in explode, exploding grains. Um, and it will kind of walk through the process uh, stage by stage, which will hopefully make it relatively clear as to what's going on. Uh, shout out to Eric Onya, um, who uh, showed me a long time ago, uh, or at least gave me the idea for some of the uh, engine. Um, I've modified it a little bit, but uh, the foundation was his. Um, so yeah, let's let's make a start. So we'll make a new um, Max patch. I'm working on two screens, uh, hence me sort of moving moving windows from screen to screen. So first thing we're going to need is a buffer, uh, and I'm going to call that buffer um, my sump. Um, and we'll need a, a means of loading something into that buffer, so I'll use a uh, drop file object and use replace oops dollar uh, one so if you've been through any of my other tutorials you'll f be familiar with this idea of the dollar one as a kind of uh, variable that's that takes whatever I drop into this drop file object, uh, it will throughput it, prepending it with this replace message. Um, another thing I'm going to do, which I probably don't need to do for the purposes of this, but I'll do it anyway because it's good practice, is to uh, use this info tilde object to derive data from the buffer that I've just loaded. So when I've dropped my um, sample into here, loads the buffer and then it will send a bang out of the right hand outlet. I'm going to use that to trigger a way of reading that buffer um, hence this my sample uh, argument being the same as the one in the buffer tilde object um, and getting information about it. The only information that I really want at the moment is total time so um, I'm going to put a tilde uh, a uh, float number box there and then send it to um, A sort of global variable um, by using the send object here. Um, so that can be put to one side. Uh, we've got a way of loading a sound into a buffer. Uh, I'm going to look. I'm going to do that now because we'll be using uh, a particular sound. So let's find that. Um, looking for uh, walk clang. So this is a this is a sound that I quite regularly use, and you'll hear it in a minute. So it's about five seconds long. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, as I say, we'll build this in stages. So the first stage is going to be to uh, get that um, to play back. And we'll use a groove object as the, the sort of um, the, the core of our engine. Um, and that obviously has to refer to the sample that I've loaded. Um, and I need two particular things in order to trigger that sound. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to put in a live uh, gain object. So we'll send this to both channels. I'm going to make this mono, but you could simply make it stereo by um, uh, putting a, a two as an additional argument to the groove object. Or indeed, if you wanted to make this multi-channel, you could put in any other number of uh, some uh, channel number into the groove object um, and you could you could make a you know an eight channel granulation object if you wanted to um, so easy DAC there just again because we're only working in well we're only working in mono but we're sending to two channel outputs um, so as I say two things that we need in order to get this thing to play back we need something to tell it where to start from so I will tell it to start reading that sound file from millisecond zero. 
and uh, something to tell it how fast to play back. Oops. Um, so we use a sig tilde object to uh, with a specific value that will tell um, our sample to play back at a particular uh, speed. Um, and I'm actually going to send a message to the object to tell it to play back at one speed. So I'll send that into there as well. And then I'm going to trigger both of those at the same time. Now, as it happens, I could just put a, an argument as a sig with a one and it would always play back at one speed. Uh, but because I'm probably going to change the playback speed so that I can get variable speed grains, um, I'm going to actually send it a message for the time being. So if I send uh, a button object to both of those message boxes, then it will trigger those. Um, and we should, all being well, have that sample play back, as indeed we do. So that's the sound we're going to be working with.